already in, in some of these futures markets, we've seen, seen soybean prices coming down, we've seen pork-related prices coming down. This idea that all of a sudden um, a lot of folks in key areas that the president won in the Midwest and elsewhere uh, are taking it on the chin, what do you tell them? I think a lot of those folks are sick and tired of unfair trade practices. You know, you can't put the onus on President Trump. The onus here is blame China. All right, uh, Larry Kudlow, uh, the White House Economic Council head, uh, former financial commentator, saying, you know, uh, the White House uh, isn't worried. He isn't worried. So why do I sound worried? Who's really to blame China or the White House on this? Well, we are where we are, right? Just an agricultural committee member at North Dakota Republican Senator John Hoven. He's just concerned that this could get out of hand. I think that is, is the gist of it, right? That's your biggest concern, right? Well, Neil, good to be with you. We Senior. recognize that China does, does not follow fair trade practices. And, of course, the administration is trying to get China uh, to not only engage in uh, free trade, but fair trade. And we understand that's the effort. Uh, but at the same time, we want to be careful because uh, we're concerned that ag products are often uh, the ones that end up with the retaliatory tariffs. And so that's why we have to be careful as we work through this to make sure that we don't have tariffs on our ag products. So right now, the most likely response, since a lot of these products, as you know, sir, are, are traded on the futures markets, a lot of them have been going down. Now, there's been a little bit of stability today, but everything from soybeans, wheat, corn, I could go on and on, have been slipping on the belief right. here that this, 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 this could hurt. So it's already hurting before tariffs would even take effect, if they ever were. Um, what are your folks telling you? Well, first, it's important to understand that essentially these are potential tariffs. They're not tariffs that are Absolutely. in place now. So there's a comment period till about the end of May, May 22nd, in that time frame. Then the administration has about um, 180 days, six months, to decide whether or not they're going to impose tariffs. What China has said is that they would impose retaliatory tariffs. That's the concern. So it's very important that this negotiation be conducted in a way where we don't end up with those tariffs. And again, that's why we make the case. We export... Uh, as a country, $14 billion worth of soybeans to China every year. $1.5 billion of those come out of my state. So whether it's beef, whether it's pork, whether it's wheat, soybeans, corn, all these things, we need these international markets in agriculture. We can compete, but these tariffs obviously are a big disadvantage for us. So what we're trying to do is make sure that as we work through this negotiation, we're representing what needs to happen for agriculture. Um, there is some uh, talk out there, Senator, that the, the president's people were surprised the Chinese uh, had that rapid fire response when, when he offered better than a new set of tariffs on better than 105 or six items. Uh, Senator Joni Ernst, the Republican of Iowa, uh, also a big farming state, said that I need for him, the president, uh, to understand that we're hurting in the Midwest and this is not helping. Uh, so she, too, in that camp that says, well, uh, it doesn't take much for this to fall apart. Do you think the president appreciates that? Well, he does. I, I've been to the White House myself, sat in the Oval Office, and talked to him about it and how important these issues are. So he does understand it. But, you know, it's important we continue to make our case. Commodity prices are low right now. So our farmers and ranchers are, are struggling. And so we need to be real careful here that we open up markets which the president is trying to do. That's good that we get fair trade, but that we don't end up with retaliatory tariffs. Um, let's say this does work, Senator. Do you have any fears that um, it, it, in the meantime it would offset the gains that many in your state are experiencing from the tax cuts and that this could come back, maybe not specifically in your state, but elsewhere to hurt Republicans in November? Well, that's the key, isn't it, Neil? You combine the regulatory relief, the tax cuts, and expanded trade. That's what really gets the economy going. And for Republicans, that's what we're trying to do. And I think that as long as we're able to do that, we're going to be in very strong uh, position for the elections because that's, you know, that's jobs, that's, that's better wages, that's a growing economy. That's what we're working to do. Senator Hoven, always a pleasure, sir. Thank you very much. Thanks, Neil.